Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's game, I wanted to talk about the sponsor of this video, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. Don't waste hours trying to find the best buy list price for your cards online. Simply send them to Card Conduit and let them take care of the rest. Send them your unsorted cards and Card Conduit will sort, grade, and find the best price for you online. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best prices for your cards, including bulk. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value, and then they will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their new sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them pre-sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send them to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. They will give you the best price for your cards as well. They work with competitive buy listing partners, including ones not open to the public. Users get an average of 19% more for their collection than they would from any major retail buy list, even with Card Conduit's fees. They also optimize buy listing for card condition as well. Since vendors have different penalties for wear and tear, Card Conduit will find the best buy list priced against the specific condition of a card. So give Card Conduit a try today. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. Did you know that our CEDH Webcam League now runs monthly? That's right. Every month we run the league so players can compete for cash prizes. All you have to do is sign up for our Patreon at any tier. So hop in and compete in the league. Our custom sleeves are on sale. Right now through the end of the month, get 10% off of our sleeves. Use the link in the description below or go to our site and enter the code CRUXSUCKS and get 10% off of your purchase. We also have other merchandise available. Visit our link and pick up a t-shirt. Your purchase helps support the channel. We went to Command Fest Indy over the summer to record games. We love going to conventions and recording, so stay tuned to our social media to find out the next event we will be attending. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Cory piloting Shorkai Genesis Engine. This is a humility deck that seeks to slow the board with backbreaking stacks and win with a dramatic scepter loop. Cory's opening hand contains an Ancient Tomb, City of Brass, Mana Vault, Supreme Verdict, Mana Crypt, Unwinding Clock, and a Dranath Magistrate. Next, we have Kyle piloting Sisse Weatherlight Captain with Gigantha the Wellspring as the companion. This is a very unique Planeswalker combo deck. It wins by activating its commander to tutor up an intricate line of Planeswalkers to win the game. Kyle's opening hand contains a Gaia's Cradle, Command Tower, Grim Monolith, Noxious Revival, Rest in Peace, Deathrite Shaman, and a Teferi who slows the sunset. After that we have Ryan piloting his classic deck, Goto Bandit Warlord. Ryan and Goto are a tale as old as time, and boy that's pretty old. In all seriousness, Goto is one of CEDH's most classic decks. Its goal? Cast Goto, tutor Helm of the Host onto the battlefield, and swing for the win. Ryan's opening hand contains a Gemstone Caverns, Red Elemental Blast, Gamble, Tibalt's Trickery, Mana Vault, Cursed Mirror, and a Cavern of Souls. Finally, we have Lincoln piloting Lazav the Multifarious. This is a Buried Alive combo deck. It puts cards into the graveyard and then combos off using its commander. Lincoln's opening hand contains a Dark Ritual, Mystic Remora, Mox Amber, Spell Pierce, Forbidden Orchard, Jataxian Probe, and a Dispel. Without further ado, let's begin this obnoxiously oblivious obscene offbeat optical illusion. Cory has the best old man yelling at clouds impersonation and gets to start us off. But Ryan has a pregame action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Red Elemental Blast. Cory draws a card for turn and plays a City of Brass. He casts a Mana Crypt. He taps a City of Brass to play a turn one, Draneth Magistrate. The rest of the table knows it's going to be one of those games, and Cory passes. Kyle draws a card for turn and plays a Command Tower. He casts Deathrite Shaman. He passes. Ryan draws and plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Human as it enters. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Tibalt's Trickery. He ships the turn. Lincoln draws and starts off his turn by paying two life to help cast a Taxian Probe, targeting Cory. He looks at Cory's hand and draws a card. He casts a Mox Amber. He casts a Chrome Mox and printing Dispel. He plays an Exotic Orchard. He casts Mystic Remora. He gives the turn to Cory. During his upkeep, Cory loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He moves to combat and attacks Lincoln with Draneth Magistrate. Lincoln takes it, and all finished up, Cory ships his turn. Kyle draws and plays a Kaya's Cradle. He casts a Soul Ring. Mystic Remora triggers, and Lincoln draws. He casts a Grim Monolith, and Lincoln draws off of Remora again. Kyle gives the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Dwarven Ruins into play tapped. He takes no other actions and passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Lincoln casts Dark Ritual, adding three black. He flashes in an Opposition Agent. The turn moves to Lincoln. 
During his upkeep, Lincoln pays for his remora. He draws and immediately moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with opposition agent. Ryan takes it, and with nothing else, Lincoln passes. During his upkeep, Cory loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a hallowed fountain into play untapped, paying two life. He taps his City of Brass to help cast his commander, short guy, Genesis Engine. Mystic Remora triggers, and Lincoln draws. In response, Lincoln casts Force of Negation, exiling a blue card, targeting short guy. Now, before you go typing in the comments, remember, Shorkai is not a creature. It's an artifact that turns into a creature only when it's been crewed. Therefore, Force of Negation can target and counter it. Anyway, back to the game. Shorkai is countered and exiled, and Cory returns it to the command zone. All finished up, Cory ends his turn. Kyle draws and plays a Bayou. He casts Rest in Peace. Remora triggers and Lincoln draws. Rest in Peace enters and exiles all graveyards. He ships the turn. Ryan draws, stares at Draneth Magistrate, takes no other actions, and passes. During his upkeep, Lincoln pays to keep his Remora. Lincoln draws and then immediately moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Opposition Agent. Ryan takes it, and all finished up, Lincoln ships the turn. During his upkeep, Cory loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage, again. He draws and taps his Ancient Tomb to help recast his commander, Shorkai, Genesis Engine. Mystic Remora triggers and Lincoln draws. He casts Mox Opal. Remora triggers and Lincoln draws. He gives the turn to Kyle. Kyle draws and casts Sneak Attack. Remora triggers and Lincoln draws. The table braces for impact, sneak attack resolves, but Kyle decides to bide his time. He gives the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws, curses Cory and Draneth Magistrate, takes no other actions, passing. During his upkeep, Lincoln lets his Remora die. He draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to help cast Demir Signet. He casts a Ledger Shredder. He passes. At the end of Lincoln's turn, Cory activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. During his upkeep, Cory loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. Cory wonders if his Mana Crypt is faulty, and the table laughs. He draws and casts a Mana Vault. He casts Unwinding Clock. Ledger Shredder triggers and Lincoln connives, drawing, discarding, and putting a 1-1 counter on Shredder. In response, Lincoln casts Force of Will, paying a life and exiling a blue card, targeting Unwinding Clock. In response, Cory casts Swan Song, targeting Force of Will. Swan Song counters Force, Lincoln creates a 2-2 bird, and Unwinding Clock resolves. Cory casts Asper Sentinel. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Skull Clamp. He activates Skull Clamp, equipping it to a pilot, killing it, and drawing two cards. He plays an island for turn. He activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Finished up, he gives the turn to Kyle. Cory untaps his artifacts with Kyle through Unwinding Clock. Kyle draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He passes. At the end of Kyle's turn, Cory activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Cory untaps his artifacts with Ryan through Unwinding Clock. Ryan draws and takes no other actions, passing the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Cory activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Lincoln draws and plays a Cephalid Coliseum. He takes no other actions and passes. At the end of Lincoln's turn, Cory flashes in an Avon Mind Sensor. He activates Shorkai. In response, Lincoln taps his Cephalid Coliseum to help flash in a Notion Thief. Notion Thief resolves, and with the Shorkai trigger still on the stack, Cory taps his City of Brass to help flash in Dress Down. Ledger Shredder triggers, and Lincoln connives. In response, Lincoln taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Spell Pierce, targeting Dress Down. Shredder triggers, and Lincoln connives again. Spell Pierce resolves, Cory pays two, and then Dress Down resolves. Dress Down enters, and Cory draws. Then Shorkai's ability resolves, and Cory draws two, discards one, and creates a pilot. Still in the end step, with Opposition Agent temporarily shut off, Kyle cracks his Misty Rainforest, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. The turn finally moves to Cory. During his upkeep, Cory finally wins his Mana Crypt roll. The table cheers, remembers he's the enemy, and then stops cheering. During his draw step, Cory takes the damage from his Mana Vault. He plays an Exotic Orchard for turn. He activates Skull Clamp twice, killing two pilots and drawing four cards. He casts Counterbalance. He casts Sensei's Divining Top, which is really bad with Counterbalance. He activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Enlightened Tutor. He clamps a pilot, drawing two cards. All through, Cory ends his turn. At the end of Cory's turn, Dress Down is sacrificed. Kyle draws and casts a Graft Digger's Cage. Counterbalance triggers and Cory declines to reveal. Esper triggers and Kyle pays. All finished up, Kyle passes. Ryan draws and takes no other actions. He yells at some clouds and then ships his turn. Lincoln draws and immediately moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Notion Thief and Opposition Agent and then Cory with Ledger Shredder. They both take it and in his second main phase, Lincoln casts Mox Diamond. Esper triggers and since it's not an optional trigger, Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. Mox Diamond resolves, Lincoln doesn't discard a land and then Diamond goes to the graveyard. He plays a clear water pathway for turn. He casts Demonic Tutor. Ledger Shredder triggers and Lincoln connives. Tutor resolves, he searches the top four, puts one into his hand and shuffles. He taps his Cephalid Coliseum to cast Ristic Study. Counterbalance triggers and in response, Cory activates his top looking at and rearranging the top three. He then declines to flip for Counterbalance and then Ristic Study resolves. Lincoln passes. 
At the end of Lincoln's turn, Cory flashes in Cathar Commando, paying for Rhystic. During his upkeep, Cory loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Cephalid Colosseum. He activates top, looking at and rearranging the top 3. All finished up, Cory gives the turn to Kyle. Kyle draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He casts Teferi, who slows the sunset, paying for Esper and Rhystic. He activates Teferi, untapping his Soul Ring and Command Tower and gaining 2 life. Kyle gives the turn to Ryan. At the end of Kyle's turn, Cory sacrifices his Cathar Commando to destroy Rhystic's study. Still in the end step, Ryan casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Draneth Magistrate. Esper triggers and Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. In response to Bolt, Cory casts Dovin's Veto, countering Lightning Bolt. The turn moves to Ryan. Ryan draws and starts off his turn by casting Treasonous Ogre. He pays 3 life into Treasonous Ogre, adding a red. He casts Jessica's Will, targeting Lincoln. Esper Sentinel triggers and Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. In response, Lincoln taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Pongify, targeting Treasonous Ogre. Esper triggers and Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. In response, Ryan activates Treasonous Ogre, paying 12 life, adding 4 red. Then Ogre is destroyed and Ryan creates a 3 3 8. Jessica's Will then resolves and Ryan adds 5 red. He casts Jaxus, the Troublemaker. He casts Hammer of Nizan. It enters and triggers, equipping itself to Jaxus. He ships his turn. Lincoln draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He moves to combat, attacking Cory with Ledger Shredder and his bird. Cory blocks Shredder with Avon Mind Sensor and then takes the rest. In his second main phase, Lincoln casts Entomb. Esper and Counterbalance trigger. In response, Cory activates his top, looking at and rearranging the top three. He reveals a Flusterstorm through Counterbalance, countering Entomb. Then, Esper's trigger resolves and Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. Lincoln then pays four life to help cast Snuff Out, targeting Ryan's ape. Shredder triggers and Lincoln connives. He casts Dark Confidant. Counterbalance triggers and Cory spins his top in response. He reveals Dramatic Reversal off of Counterbalance, countering Dark Confidant. With nothing else, Lincoln ships the turn. During his upkeep, Cory loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and then he spins his top. He takes no other actions and passes the turn. Kyle draws and pays three to put Gigantha into his hand. He activates Teferi, targeting his Grim Monolith and his Bayou. He untaps both and gains two life. He casts Noble Hierarch. He gives the turn to Ryan. During his draw step, Ryan takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He takes no other actions, passing the turn. Lincoln draws and immediately moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Ledger Shredder and his Bird. Ryan takes it and Lincoln passes. At the end of Lincoln's turn, Cory spins his top. During his upkeep, Cory once again loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts Thassa's Oracle. The table suddenly comes to attention and Cory tells him that it's just for value. No one believes him and then Thoracle resolves. It enters, triggers, and the table braces for impact. Cory simply looks at the top five cards of his library, keeps one on top, and puts the rest on bottom. All finished up, the table breathes a sigh of relief, and Cory ends his turn. Kyle draws and casts Rouse Eric, paying the Esper tax. In response, Lincoln casts Counterspell, targeting Rouse Eric. Esper triggers, and Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. Then Counterspell counters Rao. Kyle activates Teferi, targeting his Soul Ring and his Volcanic Island. He untaps both and gains two life. He ships the turn to Ryan. During his draw step, Ryan takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He casts Kark Clan Ironworks. Esper triggers, and Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. Ryan gives the turn to Lincoln. Lincoln draws and casts an Arcane Signet. Esper triggers, and he draws through Notion Thief. He taps his Cephalid Colosseum to help cast Windfall. Shredder and Counterbalance trigger, and in response, Cory spins the top. He then declines to reveal for Counterbalance. Still in response, Cory casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Windfall. Windfall is countered, and Lincoln moves to combat. He attacks Cory with Ledger Shredder and Ryan with his bird. Both take it, and Ryan and Cory die. All finished up, Lincoln passes. Kyle draws and plays a City of Brass. He casts Gaia Drone Dehada. He activates it to gain control of Opposition Agent. Kyle activates Teferi, targeting his Soul Ring and his Volcanic Island. He untaps both and gains two life. He casts his commander, Sisse, Weatherlight Captain. He activates Sneak Attack, putting Gigantha onto the battlefield, giving it haste until the end of turn. He taps Gigantha for mana. He activates Sisse, fetching up a Teferi, Time Raveler, onto the battlefield. Lincoln sighs as he's now locked out of casting spells on Kyle's turn. He activates Teferi, bouncing his own Gigantha and drawing a card. He cracks his Marsh Flats, pays a life, and fetches up a Plateau onto the battlefield. He activates Sneak Attack, putting Gigantha onto the battlefield, giving it haste. He floats mana through Gigantha and then activates Sisse, fetching up Kiora, Behemoth Beckoner, onto the battlefield. He activates Kiora, untapping Gigantha, and activates Sisse again. He fetches up Kiora, Master of Depths, onto the battlefield. He activates Kiora, Master of Depths, untapping Gigantha. He activates Sisse, fetching up an Oath of Teferi, onto the battlefield. He reactivates Kiora, Behemoth Beckoner, untapping Gigantha. He activates Sisse, fetching up the Chain Veil, onto the battlefield. He activates the Chain Veil, giving all of his Planeswalkers another activation this turn. He reactivates Teferi, who slows the sunset, targeting his Guy's Cradle, Gigantha, and Chain Veil, untapping them and gaining two life. He activates Sisse, fetching up Saheeli Ray onto the battlefield. He activates it, scrying one, and pinging Lincoln for one. 
He presents a loop of activating the Chain Veil, reactivating Teferi who slows the sunset, untapping Gaia's Cradle, Gigantha, and the Chain Veil for infinite Chain Veil activations. Each time he activates a Healy Ray, pinging Lincoln until he is dead, and Kyle wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a fun game. Congrats to Kyle on his win. Kyle was unfortunate in that he was locked out for most of the game. He kept his head low and didn't do anything that would draw unnecessary attention to himself. He let the others fight each other and then seized the opportunity when the stacks pieces were removed. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of a competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.